I have my instance of Debian up and running. I have an instance of Debian for this class. And if you take a look right here, you can see that the IP address is 218. I have started an instance of PuTTY so that you can more easily see what it is I'm talking about. And you can see that I have logged in to 56.218's IP address. I log in as a regular user and then I become root with the su command. We are going to be adding software to this machine, so let's go ahead and do that. The first thing, because we're going to be installing software, we should always do apt update. We want to update our software, and then apt upgrade. This is probably overly unnecessary, but I always do that when I'm installing new software on Debian. And now I can go ahead and install. I want to apt install John. The tool is called John the Ripper, and it'll allow us to go through and install some, uh, it'll allow us to go through and try and crack passwords. It has a bunch of default options that work well for us. We're going to say yes, and it's going to go ahead and install the software. By the way, um, the activities we're doing now can be found in the cracking passwords submodule. Specifically, we're looking at the passwords audit document. So when we take a look at the passwords audit document, the first part talks about compromising passwords for Windows. Now, we don't do this quite so much um, anymore. Um, there isn't as reliable a system for cracking Windows 10 passwords. This works for Windows 7. If you can find an instance of Windows 7 you wish to play with, this does work. But um, there isn't as reliable a system now. When this changes, I'll update the content. But if you want to see how they used to crack passwords in Windows using OffCrack, this is how you did it. And OffCrack actually uses rainbow tables as well. Um, so sometimes you just set it up on an ISO for a CD or DVD. And sometimes you need to set it up properly using a downloaded rainbow table, which can be you know, 2 gigs is a small rainbow table. 10 gigs is a medium-sized rainbow table. 100, 250 gigabytes is a large and well-designed rainbow table for many characters and many character diverse, um, diverse characters. Okay, what I want to focus on is page 3, is where we actually take a look at um, making sure we understand cracking passwords. And to do this, we must be logged in as root, which I am, okay? The, the issue with passwords is that we can't um, touch the contents of the shadow file. Um, passwords are stored in a file called shadow. Um, there's obviously a typo here. That's not the password. That's a shadow. I should say shadow there, but regardless. Um, historically, all password information was stored in a single file. The username, the password, the shell they were using, their home directory, some extra information, their user ID and their group ID. Seven fields were stored in the password file, the ETC password file. Everything was stored in there. When you logged in, you logged into that, including your password hash. Everybody needed to be able to read that which means that everybody could see your password hash. And then they would turn around and install something like John the Ripper. It wasn't an install. It was often download the source code and compile and then run it against those password hashes. Earlier instances of Unix realized that this was a problem and they moved everything off to a file called ETC Shadow. This should say Shadow here. And they made the ETC Shadow file so that only a couple of people could see it, the root and the members of the shadow group. And they tried to limit anybody else from seeing it. And it's in the shadow file that we find our encrypted password strings. Only root really can see this file. So if you're going to do a password audit, you must be logged in as root. Okay? Because, as you can see,
The password file is readable by anybody, but the shadow file is readable by root and members of the group shadow. And only the root can modify that shadow file. So if we're going to do anything on this site, we need to be root, which is why we call it an audit at this point, rather than a password cracking activity, nevertheless. Once we've installed John, we want to add some users to our system. Let's take a look at our shadow file right now. When we look at the shadow file, this is an example of my password string for my user SJ. This is an example of the password string for my user ID root. And if you want to try cracking my password hashes, let me make it easy for you. The password for root is password. The password for SJ is generic. So if you want, you can try cracking those passwords, but you know, I've already told you what the strings are, but you do you, okay? The next bit I want to show you is the string six string. This is indication of an SHA 512 type password string. Really, really, really well encrypted. So this is going to be, you know, that much harder to crack that really, really, really long string. What we are going to do is we are going to create three new users to our system. Now I can copy and paste these commands into my system because I'm using putty. Okay. Because I'm using putty, it is easy for me to start uh, copying and pasting content. If you're just using your regular terminal, if you are using the terminal access through VirtualBox, you're not going to be able to copy and paste. You're going to have to type these things in. Because I'm using Debian, I'm sorry, because I'm using putty, I can copy and paste. So next thing I want to do is the change password command. And I'm going to specify an argument that says dash M. And I'm going to set up MD5 passwords, which are generally considered not very good passwords. Okay? You'll see why when we, take, when we compare the password strings going forward. So I'm going to set some passwords for those users I just added. You could have done the add user command, but then it would have prompted you for a password right away. And we want to set bad passwords with poor encryption. So we're going to use the change password command with the user add commands. And it looks like it's hung up, but it's actually waiting for input from me. Again, I can go back in here and I can start specifying some passwords. And you see them here, user one, user two, user three. I'm just going to type those in. You can type in anything you want to just ensure that you have them separated by a colon. And I'll say generic again, user two and password. User 3 NCC1701. And then to save our work, control D twice, and it'll save our work. All right? The way that you know it has saved our work is because now when we take a look at Shadow again, we see our three new user accounts now have password strings assigned. Now compare the length of the SHA512 password string with the length of the SH of the MD5 password string. Quite a bit shorter because the SHA512 is a more complicated algorithm to generate these password hashes. Okay? So perfect. We have been able to successfully create users with really, really, really weak passwords. Let's see what happens next. Originally, as I said, we used to have everything in this one file, this password file in the etc directory, P-A-S-S-W-D. The first column is the username. The second column was where the password string was stored before. The third column is the user ID. The fourth column is the group ID. The fifth column is kind of like a description. This is something to describe the person, a full name, um, an office, a phone number, those kinds of things. The sixth directory 
is their home directory in the file system and their seventh directory is the default shell that they are using. We have since moved this password off to the separate file, but this is kind of what John the Ripper is expecting by default. So what we're going to do is we're going to recreate that with the unshadow command. As always, I'm going to create a directory. I'm going to call it password audit and I'm going to change into password audit. Tab is your friend. And I'm going to unshadow my etc password. Tab is your friend. etc shadow. And I'm going to redirect that to a new file. And I'm going to just call it passwords.txt. All of this can be found in this work directory here. Okay? We're unshadowing our work. I didn't have the create directory in my example, but you should always have a separate directory for your activities. Once you have, you can unshadow to a new file, and then you simply run John against it. Okay? So I'm going to unshadow my file. And now there's a file called passwords.txt. When I look at that, it has that ancient seven columns of data style. We have the username and the password and everything else. Are there other ways of doing this? Of course there are. But this is what John the Ripper expects, and that's what the unshadow command is for. It joins them together. You can copy and paste, you can cut, you can use the Unix cut and uh, grep commands, but the unshadow command makes a nice simple file for us to run our audit against. And then it's simply a question of running John against that text file that we have. There's my password, so I just simply say John passwords.txt and then right away it identifies that there's um, a couple of different things. It found NCC 1701, it found the password for root, the password for user, and it's going to now try and find the username generic, which is very, very, very telling. Okay. Even though I reused generic for my username SJ, and I think I did it for user1 with the MD5, it's taking longer to find because believe it or not, the word generic isn't that common a password. It will find it eventually. It'll iterate through the dictionary that it uses in its dictionary attack, and then it'll start doing a brute force attack. Eventually, it will find the string generic. It will take a time, okay? But please note right here, the word password that I assigned to root was using SHA-512. And even though it's a nice long encrypted string, a bad password is a bad password. Okay? I don't care how good your encryption is, if you use a bad password that is found in dictionaries, it is a bad password. Even my password generic which isn't all that unique a word, is a much better password than something like NCC 1701. So it's very important to note. Once you're done, you can hit Control C to stop. And then if you exit out, exit out and come back to it at a later date, You can be. You have to do this as root. You can pick up where you left off. So it's already uh, crack three. It's going to take a look at the remaining two hashes that it hasn't cracked yet. This is very, very, very important because if you try rerunning. John the Ripper against something that's already been compromised, you're not going to see your results. Unless you go in and say, you know, show me all your old results. And this is one of the reasons why every time you do a brand new in industry, this doesn't apply at the college. We're going to mitigate this risk here at the college. But once you're out in industry and you're doing attacks, you always want to start with a clean set of tools because the stuff that you do leaves breadcrumbs all over your tool set 
and you don't always remember the stuff that you need to undo so you can do a brand new attack when the next one comes around. So when it comes to doing pen tests in the future, always start with a clean tool set before going forward. If you want to get rid of the existing process that John the Ripper is using, go into your home directory. All right, just type in cd pwd as root and you do an ls-al and you will see a directory called dot john because it starts with a dot it means it's hidden so this is a hidden directory that has a bunch of temporary work files in it including what it's doing I can't remember what the plot is. Oh yeah, this is what it's been able to figure out so far. So if you want to see what it's already cracked, you can take a look at the john.pot. And then there's the john.log, which has log file or log activity, what it's already done. Um, if you want a reset of all of that, all right, cd to your home directory or cd tilde, which is the upper left corner of your keyboard, upper, upper left corner, Ensure that you're in the root directory. Make sure that you can see the dot John directory and type in the following rm r dot John. Okay, you are deleting a directory and all of its subdirectory content. That's okay. Just make sure that you say dot John when you do that. And when you hit enter, your dot John directory will be gone. It was between bash and local. It's not there now. You can go back in and restart your attack. And it'll start from the beginning, start cracking those passwords all over again. So when it comes time to do your um, competency with some of these things, you have to delete the old activity so that you can start again. Again, go to your home directory remove the directory dot john rm dash r dot john tab is your friend and then you can start your attack again <laughs>